So you can see James is editing away here in Final Cut, or at least pretending to. I'm gonna go ahead and rip out one of our drives. Have you ever walked into a coffee shop in the middle of the day and been shocked to see how many people appear to be using it as their office? Well, that's because there are a ton of freelancers out there who do everything from pitching clients to writing scripts to editing video, often all on one portable machine. But sometimes, especially if you're editing video or even photos, you need more storage space than a MacBook Pro, or any laptop for that matter, can offer. That's where this puppy comes in. So we've configured our test device here with over 100 terabytes of rapid access storage, actually 120 terabytes to be precise, and only a single Thunderbolt 3 cable is required to connect it to our laptop. Oh, and did I mention that it charges too? We're gonna show you guys how to do it. Speaking of showing you guys, we're gonna show you guys how to check out our sponsor, Glasswire. If you don't know what's going in and out of your PC or Android device when you're connected to the internet, you can use Glasswire to see if there are any badly behaving apps. Use offer code Linus to get 25% off at the link below. So when we first set out to build our 100 terabyte laptop, the first thing we needed was a PC or a Mac with Thunderbolt 3. Thunderbolt 3 gives us both the performance and the ease of use that we need to make this a legitimately viable solution instead of just a weird tech demo. The second thing we needed was a DAS. Now a DAS is not to be confused with a NAS, which is short for Network Attached Storage. Those things are great. We use them all the time here at our office. They can be accessed remotely and they can be used by multiple computers, so therefore multiple users simultaneously. The problem though, is that they are slower, especially in terms of access latency. So our DAS or direct attached storage device is an Arica ARC 8050 T3-12. Now there are four, six, and eight drive variants that are also available, but we chose this one because we wanted a really flashy headline, like 100 terabytes. Ooh. The other main feature that we wanted was of course, Thunderbolt 3. So it comes with the included Thunderbolt cable that you see right here, which gives us 40 gigabit per second peak transfer speeds between our devices and the ability to daisy chain using the second Thunderbolt 3 port. Keep in mind though, that we wouldn't use this capability to add more storage boxes on top of the one we have. Instead, we'd rely on this right here. This is an SF8644 port, and it's a lot cooler than it sounds because it lets us take just kind of a dummy secondary enclosure and link our original one to it and use the controller that's in here, as well as the Thunderbolt 3 chip here to allow this one to manage the whole thing as one big array. So inside our Arica enclosure is an LSI hardware RAID processor, also called a Radon chip or ROC. So it's higher performance compared to software RAID in many cases, but could be harder to recover data from as compared to software RAID in the event of an error. And that was actually something that we did experience with hardware RAID in the past. Inside here is also two gigs of ECC RAM, which causes about a 2% performance hit, but allows us to detect and correct data that was improperly read or written. Now let's talk about our drives. So this unit is actually sold diskless, but B&H, who generously provided our unit for this video, offers preloaded systems if you, for whatever reason, have trouble finding the NAS optimized drives that are out there and installing them, which you shouldn't because it's a pretty simple process. So you basically take your four screws, screw them into the bottom of these rails, and then there's a back plane in the back of the unit that you slide it into and lock your drive in place. But there are ways to make mistakes. Like they do have mounting holes for two and a half inch drives, but I wouldn't recommend using those in a unit like this because you'll be compromising your capacity and your performance. Anyway, we actually prefer the empty version because this is cool. You don't need to fill all of the bays right off the bat. On many DASs, if you were to add more drives later, it would mean that you would need to reformat and recreate your RAID. And that's pretty inconvenient because the whole point of having a device like this 
is this is like your storage locker for all of your stuff. Where are you going to put it all while you reformat it? Ours, on the other hand, has what's called online volume expansion, so that additional capacity can be used to enlarge the last volume set or create another volume set. Now, as for mixing and matching drives, that's something that you run into when you add some drives now and you upgrade later. Some people actually encourage using different makes and models of disks as long as they keep the same spindle RPM, so that's to say how fast the disk actually spins within the drive, and the same claimed capacity. So the arguments for this are that it reduces the risk of systemic failure, so that's to say like a flaw that affects all particular units of, of this drive, for example. Another thing that's nice about adding drives over time is that they won't all be the same age. If you look at the way that hard drives fail over time, it tends to be a lot of them, then very few, then it ramps up significantly as they get older. So if they're all the same age, you can imagine that they would all start to drop off at around the same time. With all of that said, if you've got known good drives, there is a performance advantage to using ones that are all the same if you're striping data across them, which we are doing because we're looking for not just massive capacity, but also high performance. For our project, we went with Seagate's 12 terabyte Iron Wolf Pros. They have a great balance of price and performance, and they deliver the capacity that we need in order to hit our goal. Now, we could have gone with something more expensive like a SAS drive. Our DAS actually does support that, but for this kind of a deployment, there's not gonna be a performance benefit, so we're gonna stick with these sort of prosumer grade devices instead. The last thing we need is power. Now, this is just a standard power cord, but I would strongly recommend for a device like this, either getting the sold separately battery backup or connecting it to a UPS so that it doesn't suddenly lose power in the event of a power outage. All right, so that's, that's it. Now we are ready to go through the setup process. To set up your machine, download the installer from the Arica website and follow the steps. After restarting, launch the Storage Manager to configure your RAID. Now there are a ton of different options in here, but we're going to choose Quick Create and RAID 5 plus Spare. This is going to stripe our data across 11 of our drives, including one parity drive, and it will leave one spare drive available just in case one of our other 11 decides to kick the bucket. This way, it will rebuild automatically in the event of a drive failure. Now you'll have to wait some number of hours for your array to initialize. It ended up taking about 10 hours in our case. So now that everything is completely set up and ready to go, you can see we're running off of battery here, but we take our single Thunderbolt 3 cable, plug it into our system, our array fires up, we are charging our MacBook, and theoretically, we're gonna see our external storage volume pop up right around here. So one of the few disk speed tests for Mac is actually the Blackmagic disk speed test, which is intended to find out how fast a particular volume is in the context of what kind of footage it can handle. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to select our target drive. Let's go ahead and see it. Wow, look at it go. Not too shabby. Just shy of two gigabytes per second on both reads and writes, which results in a completely green lit up Blackmagic disk speed test. We can handle everything up to 4K 60 FPS content at 10 bit 422. But that's not actually much of a surprise to us because two gigabytes per second is well in excess of even the data rates of our 8K cameras. So you would be able to handle any kind of footage under the sun using a connection like this to an array like that. For our next trick, we're gonna take a look at Final Cut Pro X. Now, I am far from an expert on the use of this software, so we brought in one of our editors to give me your honest impressions. Any, any thoughts on the performance of this timeline? It's a multicam clip, so. Is that demanding typically? Usually, yeah. Feels good, feels responsive? More or less, yeah. Any complaints whatsoever? Can you find any problem? I wanna know about the problems. I mean, to be clear, I'm not actually expecting you to find a problem. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good, because. We're editing off of this, and it's like two gigabytes a second read and write. So we are expecting it to perform well. I was just hoping maybe no, you could 
find some some flaw in the machine. No? Looks good? Very snappy, yeah. Cool. No, perfect. So overall, this is not a cheap solution, but we're really happy with the experience. It charges our laptop, it gives us blazing fast performance, and of course, like any hardware RAID enclosure, it gives us some fault tolerance. So you can see James is editing away here in Final Cut, or at least pretending to. I'm gonna go ahead and rip out one of our drives. It's gonna freak the heck out, but we're still editing, baby. Pretty cool, right? Anyway, it gets even better. Go ahead and close down Final Cut. And can you drag that drive to the garbage there? When it's time to go out and hit the road, that's all there is to it. See ya. There's no door here. And I'm back with this segue to our sponsor, Corsair's Iron Claw RGB Wireless Gaming Mouse. It features a comfortable palm grip, a PMW3391 optical sensor with native 18,000 DPI. It's got three methods of connection with a 1.8 meter braided USB cable for charging, their slipstream wireless technology for sub one millisecond latency, and Bluetooth, which gives you compatibility with a wide range of devices. It's got up to 24 hours of battery life, three zone RGB, it's made for FPS and mobile games, and it's got a two year warranty. Buy yours today at the link in the video description. So thanks for watching guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link below. Also in our video description is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join.